November 23rd, Blessed John Baptist Bulliker, Martyr First Order. This martyr of the Franciscan order was born at Chichester, England in 1604. He was the only son of a devout physician and received the name of Thomas in baptism. When he was 18 years old, he resolved to become a priest and a missionary. At first, he thought of going to the missions in the West Indies, but when it was pointed out to him later on that England was a preferable field for his labors, he gladly returned to his native land and there won the martyr's crown. Because all the Catholic institutions had been suppressed in England, he first went to France, where with the consent of his zealous parents, he studied at the Jesuit College of St. Omer. About this time, God filled him with a strong desire to enter the Franciscan order. And so, when he was 19 years old, he was invested with the habit of St. Francis in the convent of Our Lady of the Ladder of Heaven in Valladolid, Spain, receiving the name of John Baptist. He was ordained to the priesthood in 1628, and soon afterwards he was sent by his superiors as a missionary to England. On foot and without money, he set out on his journey. At Bordeaux, he met the captain of a ship who volunteered to take him to England. The captain proved to be a traitor. As soon as they arrived in England, he turned Father John over to the magistrate. But Providence spared Father John for still greater things, for unaccountably he gained his freedom. For 14 years, he then worked in secret amid many hardships, persecutions, and dangers of all sorts. He undertook the task of comforting Catholics who had been imprisoned, strengthening them through the holy sacraments. In 1640, it was revealed to him that he would die a martyr's death. On Sunday, September 11th, 1642, a maid in one of the houses in London where he was accustomed to say Holy Mass in secret, betrayed him to an apostate for five pieces of gold. This man arrested him during the celebration of Holy Mass and dragged him before a magistrate in London. Father John professed and defended his religion with great candor and invincible firmness, and so he was condemned to death. He was placed on a hurdle and dragged through the muddy streets of to Tyburn, the place of execution. Unafraid and filled with holy joy, the martyr mounted the ladder to the gallows. The sheriff then hanged him, and while he yet breathed, the usual barbarous practice of quartering was inflicted on, on him. His heart still palpitating, being shown to the crowd. Finally, his head was struck off and placed on a pole on London Bridge, and the four pieces of his body on the four gates of the city. All this took place before a great crowd of people on October 12, 1642. In 1929, Pope Pius XI beatified him, together with 135 other martyrs. on the value of the Holy Sacraments. How highly blessed John Baptist Bulliker must have regarded the Holy Sacraments. He exposed himself to the risk of losing his life amid painful torture in order to bring the consolation of the sacraments to his countrymen. He was right, for the Holy Sacraments are the precious channels of grace by means of which our Savior dispenses his grace to mankind for their purification and salvation. It was not too much for our divine Savior to undertake a life of hardship and death on the cross in order to make the stream of divine grace, which had been stopped by sin, once more accessible to mankind. So Father John thought it should not be too much for his servants to risk their lives in order to direct the stream of grace to men through the channels of the Holy Sacraments. Do you regard the sacraments and the dispensers of them in this light?
reflect on the wisdom of Christ our Lord in providing for all human needs by means of the seven sacraments. In baptism, original sin is effaced, and man is born again to the life of sanctifying grace. In confirmation, the life of grace is strengthened against the storms of the world, and by means of the sacrament of the altar, it is nourished. Penance restores life if it was lost after baptism. Extreme unction remits the remains of sin and strengthens the soul for its last struggle and its passage to eternity. By means of holy orders, the ministers of the sacraments and the teachers of Christendom continue to function, and matrimony provides for the continuation and education of the Christian people. Admire the wisdom of Christ and thank him fervently for having made you a child of the Catholic Church, in which alone the sacraments are duly and validly dispensed. Consider that we must do our part if the sacraments are to produce their proper effects. Since grace is extended to us each time the sacraments are validly administered, it is for us to see to it that no obstacle be in the way of our receiving the grace. A mortal sin on our soul would be a fatal hindrance, making it impossible for us to receive the fruits of Christ's bloody sacrifice on the cross. It would be a sacrilege. Venial sin and inordinate attachment to material things tend to prevent us from receiving the fullness of the graces which would otherwise be ours. Woe to the person who approaches the sacraments sacrilegiously. Should we not exercise the greatest care that the sacraments may have their fullest effect in us? Prayer of the Church. May thy sacraments, we beseech thee, O Lord, perfect in us what they contain, that we may receive in truth what we now celebrate under outward signs, through Christ our Lord. Blessed John Baptist Bullocker, pray for us. Thank you.